be spending one month traveling through the Southeast Asian country of Vietnam. How beautiful is this? Kind of reminds me of a Vietnamese version of Venice. Starting in Hanoi and working my way down to Phu Quoc, I'll get to experience the cities and the countryside while checking out some of the main attractions along the way. We're literally surrounded by green mountains all around us. The lady just kept yelling like, get down, get down. Get down, get down. <laughs> that is impressive. And welcome to Phong Na. I mean, just look at this place. <laughs> this one I saw the trap. You're gonna have to crawl now. If you're claustrophobic, that is not the tour for you. This is pretty high up. On this journey, I'll show you what it's like solo traveling the country from its fun times. Whoa! Whoa, these turns are sick! And not so fun moments. If I had to choose a word to define Walking Street, it would be deafening. From Hanoi to Saigon, join me on this epic two part adventure traveling southbound Vietnam. This is some of the prettiest landscape I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> so the last time I was in Vietnam was back in 2013 and my god that was a terrible video. <laughs> in my defense, it was only the second time I've ever solo traveled. I mean, I did get to go to the Philippines a few times prior to that, but I was with my band at the time, we were on tour, and so I had the support of my bandmates and my friends. And then I went to Japan, which is my first YouTube video, but again, I got to stay with my friends, John and Yoko, for the month. And yes, that is not a joke, that's their names, John and Yoko. <laughs> and so when I went to Vietnam, I basically landed in Ho Chi Minh City and then went directly to Hanoi and didn't see anything in between that. And while I was in those cities, barely saw anything. I mean, I just didn't have the confidence as a solo traveler. And so a few years ago, when I was revising my YouTube channel, trying to polish it up and make it a little bit more professional and take it more seriously, I decided to delete that video, which I now regret because it's a good reflection of seeing my progression as a solo traveler and a filmmaker. Unfortunately, a couple of years ago, the hard drive that I had all that footage stored in got damaged and so I have nothing to show for it aside from the few photos that I have posted on Facebook. But I always thought that if I ever had a chance to go back again, I would do it right. And fortunately, a few months ago, March 10th to be exact, Vietnam is now opened without any quarantine. So I get to go back and redeem myself. <laughs> and so yeah, there are a couple of stipulations to going and things change every day and they might change by the time you watch this video. But as of right now, you will need to apply for a health declaration. You will need COVID insurance that covers you up to $10,000. And I'll show you the link that I used and that cost me about 45 US dollars. And then finally, you will need to download a COVID app to self monitor yourself for the first 10 days. Aside from that, that's it. You're free to enter. And I can't wait because there are so many things that I'm gonna see that I didn't get to see in my first visit. And that's it, no more hold up. Vietnam, here I come. All right, here we go, and check this out. Masks are not mandatory. How awesome is that? This trip will have multiple connections, starting with landing in Dallas, Texas, where it'll take me 27 hours to my final destination. The second flight will have a connection in Tokyo. All right, now I'm in Japan. Mask back on, and one more flight to go. And finally landing in the city of Hanoi in Vietnam. I have forgotten how long it takes to get to Southeast Asia. It is 10 p.m. and I don't think I'll be doing much, but I will need to get a taxi to get to the Airbnb. So let's do that. So I'll probably see you in the morning for the first day of seeing anything around here. Good to be back though. just got in, it is super late, and I'm still hungry. The best cure is inexpensive Southeast Asian street food. Hit the spot. It's like two o'clock right now. It's still alive out here. It's craziness. It's good to be back though.
All right, good morning from Hanoi. First morning exploring. And I am staying in the old quarter, and a lot of the sites that I want to see are within walking distance. This is our first location, the Guangzhong Gates. This is the only remaining city gate of Hanoi, when during the 18th century, it was part of the citadel that surrounded the capital city of Thanglong. It's named after Army Chief Guangzhong for his sacrifice against the French invasion. So now we're heading into what's called the international section. It just looks like a street full of like bars. I would imagine that this place is really lively at night, but you know, it's only like 10.30 in the morning right now. But I have to head to this direction because I'm going to King Lake, which is a big attraction here in Hanoi. So Vietnam was colonized by the French, so you will see a lot of the French influence architecture here. We're now in Hanoi Central and holy shit, the amount of motorbikes that are here. One thing I don't miss about Vietnam is crossing traffic. You just have to kind of like wing it and go for it and hope that they either stop or weave around you. It's a suicide mission. Let's try to do this. All right, that wasn't so bad. We just made it to Hoi King Lake. Looks like they're setting up for some sort of an event over here. And that's our next location, the Welcoming Morning Sunset Bridge. I think that's correct. Hold on a second. The Welcoming Morning Sunlight Bridge. Nok Song, meaning Temple of the Jade Mountain, is dedicated to General Trang Hong Dao, who defeated the Mongols during the Trang Dynasty in the 13th century. The bridge connects the temple as it sits on a tiny island in the center of Hoi King Lake. They don't want to get in their way. The bridge is pretty nice though. Very Instagrammable place. Initially called Nok Song Pagoda, it was changed to Nok Song Temple as pagodas serve as a place for Buddhist practices while temples are for the worship of historical figures. The temple also pays homage to a name I can't pronounce, who is the god of prosperity in ancient Chinese culture and Taoist philosophy. Wow, I haven't been here since 2013, but I actually still remembered it. And uh, I'm glad I got to come back and film it properly this time. And um, yeah, it was really peaceful. On to the next location. Now what we're gonna do is take about a 10-15 minute walk to check out some Vietnamese street murals, which I saw some pictures of it online. I think it's gonna be really, really cool. <laughs> Everything is motorbikes here. It's like, there's very few cars. It's very overwhelming, very overstimulating, but I miss this. I miss this so much. In celebration of 25 years of political relations between Korea and Vietnam, the Phong Hong Mural Street has become an iconic centerpiece along the historic Hoi King District. This one's really cool. It's all mosaics. Since 2018, each painting along the arches of the century-old Loi Biang train bridge depicts a time in Hanoi's history. There's some really good murals here. This one's probably my favorite out of all of them so far. Oh. St. Joseph's Cathedral is Hanoi's oldest church and described as a resemblance of the Notre Dame in Paris. So I've been so excited to explore the city that I've totally forgotten to eat all day. So I stopped off at this coffee house at, overlooking St. Joseph's Cathedral and I'm going to try something that's very popular in Vietnam and that is egg coffee. Now I don't drink coffee but I do like egg so this can go one of two ways. Either going to be really interesting and good or go terribly wrong but we're going to find out. But I ordered a pineapple juice as a backup just in case. No. I'm good. Okay, it just got extremely cloudy, so I'm going to try to make it to the last stop of the day, which is the Hanoi Train Street, which is very, very, very popular. approaching the Hanoi Train Street. Here we are. The train Street is one of the most unique sights to see in Hanoi. Lined with colorful cafes and homes just centimeters away from the tracks, tourists flock to catch the next train time or capturing that perfect photo. And this is where I met Marcus. I just ran into uh, Marcus here who's from Manchester. Hi guys. Yeah. All right, just stopped off at this coffee shop here. 
train's about to come in 10 minutes, got the camera set up. Now what makes this such an attraction is that this thing does not pull back, it zooms by and it's so razor close to the shops. So yeah, let's get set up and uh, wait. All right, here it comes. Come on. So I didn't end up getting the shot that I wanted. They were just being really overprotective. Oh my God. I really didn't feel like waiting another hour for the next train to come in, so moving on. <laughs> the lady kept grabbing me like, no, stand back, stand back, it's really close. Like, they think you have space between the cafe and the tracks. You have no real idea how close it actually is. The streets are madness now. Wow. Whoa. Okay, I'm going, I'm going. Later that evening, I went to grab dinner at an area that I visited earlier in the day. This is the international section that I went to earlier that I told you was going to be so busy at night. I had some local help choosing the right dish, and I even learned to cheers in Vietnamese. Afterwards, I spent the night walking the bustling streets as there seemed to be entertainment on every corner. Next morning would be my first day trip, but almost missed the bus as no one called me for the pickup. I was waiting for you guys. What's up, buddy? How you doing? <laughs> this one is a very special uh, mountain in uh, Long Bay. In uh, Long Bay, there are uh, lots of fishermen. They often come here to pray and put incense stick in this mountain. For what for lunch, they hope they can get a lot of uh, fish, seafood, maybe that for survival. That's the reason in 2000, Vietnamese government decided to put in San Bruno Mountain on Vietnamese snow. 200,000 Vietnamese snow. Day number two from Vietnam and today we're going to be doing a day trip to Ha Long Bay which is a UNESCO World Heritage Site and I'm here with Marcus who I met yesterday at the Hanoi Train Street. We began the cruise with lunch before we start our journey, which will include visiting one of the neighboring islands. Ha Long Bay is in the northeast of Vietnam and is a UNESCO World Heritage Site. It's known for its emerald waters and for the thousands of limestone islands that tower above it. The fishermen, when they go outside here, they come here put this and stick for lunch. These limestone peaks kind of reminds me of like PP Island in Thailand, but this is like on a much grander scale. The island of Titov got its name after cosmonaut German Titov visited with then President Ho Chi Minh in 1962. Titov was enamored by Ha Long Bay, and with respect to their friendship and countries, Ho Chi Minh renamed the island Titop, the Vietnamese pronunciation of his name. I think this is 350 steps to the top. Maybe this would have been easier if I didn't have my camera bag on me. <laughs> That's like an extra added 30 pounds. Heading back down, the views from the top were amazing. Bao over here did all the drone shots. We then got back on the boat for a quick ride to the next destination. Next stop is we're gonna go kayaking into a cave. Amazing, huh? <laughs> I'm here with Jose from Spain. Uh, hi. We're paddling inside this beautiful lagoon surrounded by the limestone mountains. The weather was gloomy and I had second thoughts about canceling this trip. The forecast says it was going to be raining like pretty much every day. And I said, screw it, let's just go. It's gloomy, but uh, still perfect. The best part was coming out of the tunnel and then see the lights and then all the limestone mountains surrounding you. Excellent day.
Our final stop of the day was Hang Song Sot, otherwise known as Surprise Cave, as it's the biggest cave in Halong Bay. I'm using my phone, so the poly might be shit now, but this is crazy. And you come out, and poo, welcome to the other side. Look at this. I didn't expect this. This is impressive. I guess that's why it's called the Surprise Cave. Watch your head. Damn, it just keeps going on. So Song Sa is actually split into two chambers, which became bigger and more impressive the further you went down. The roof looks like a honeycomb structure. We've reached the other end, coming out the other side. We have definitely stepped into an underground alien world. Now it's back on the boat, an hour and a half ride to the harbor, and then back to Hanoi. What a great way to end this day trip. That was definitely the most impressive part of this trip. It's my last day in Hanoi, so what I'm planning to do is walk around the West Lake area and then I'm gonna check out the oldest pagoda in Hanoi. Tranqua Pagoda, meaning protecting the country, is located on a small peninsula on the east side of Hanoi's West Lake. Its history dates back over 1500 years, being built in 541 and completed in 545. Pagodas are sacred places to Vietnamese. Ceremonies of burning incense to gods and the offerings of food and money as presents hope to bring good luck and fortune. I guess I came on the right day because all of this is in celebration of the first day of summer and it's also Mother's Day. What they do is they give offerings to Buddha, money, food, and uh, it was really nice. All right, so I just picked up a ticket for tonight's water puppet show. It happens tonight at 8 p.m. The only thing is that there's no translation, so I'm wondering if I'm gonna be able to understand it, but the lady at the front desk did tell me that the storyline is pretty simple, so I should be able to catch up. Water puppetry dates back to the 10th century and is one of Vietnam's oldest traditions. It began along the Red River Delta as a way for farmers wanting to satisfy the rice paddy spirits. They improvised using what little they had at their disposal, using the rice paddies and the nearby ponds as their stage. Themes of these shows usually depict the day-to-day -day life of harvesting, fishing, festivals with strong references to Vietnamese folklore and famous legends or myths, all while adding a humorous twist. Cute show, love the music, uh, the set was great, but it's the one thing that I feared and that was that I didn't understand what was going on, so I'm gonna have to look it up. <laughs> All right, good night. So this is it, my time at Hanoi is officially done. These last three or four days have been so much fun. I'm so glad I got to come back here and experience it all over again. But what I've been looking forward to most out of this trip is something I didn't get a chance to do the first time I was here, and that is to see the countryside of Vietnam. And that's what I'm gonna be doing today by taking a two and a half hour bus to Ninh Binh. And Marcus, who I've been hanging out in Hanoi with, has decided to join me. So, off to Ninh Binh it is. She's vibrating right now. Is it? I just shot on the remote. <laughs> <laughs> so nice. Dude, this is so oh, This is so good. Eight dollars. Eight dollars. Needless to say, leaving the city of Hanoi in comfortable style, the two hour journey to Ninh Binh went by in no time. So when I said I wanted to get out of the city and see more of the countryside, this is exactly what I envisioned of Vietnam. I mean, this is, it feels surreal. Um, we booked this place called the Green Mountain Homestay and we're literally surrounded by green mountains all around us. It's, it's picturesque. First taste of egg coffee. I've had mine. Let me see what you think about it. Tastes like Bailey's, huh? 
You know, barely. <laughs> yeah, is that good or bad? No, it's all right. It's all right? <laughs> Pretty decent. Wasting no time, we decided to rent some motorbikes, explore Nimbin, and then head to the nearest town of Tamcock. Tamcock is like a very quiet town. <laughs> All right, we finally made it to the town of Tamcock. It only took us an hour. Hello. Hello. Hey. <laughs> it should have been about a 23 minute ride, but we kept stopping to take pictures. Anyway, let's go get some lunch. And then after lunch, we decided to explore more. We even stumbled across this random temple in the middle of nowhere that had like this secret hidden back cave, which was totally awesome. Actually, Big Dong Pagoda is quite a popular attraction. Built in 1428, with three different cave temples and views across the countryside at the top of the summit. From there, we just decided to drive around more and stopped off at different viewpoints that piqued our interest. And that was pretty much our day. All right, good morning. Day number two from Ninbin. Um, yesterday was absolutely amazing. We checked in and then decided to rent some motorbikes to head to the neighboring town of Tamcock. And what we're going to be doing today is the Trang Ang boat tour, which is probably the most popular thing to do in Nimbin, which is a three hour tour that goes through the Red River Delta, surrounded by all of this natural greenery and limestone peaks, which is going to be stunning and amazing. And one of the things I've been looking forward to doing most out of this trip. So yeah, can't wait to do that. Trang An is a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Often nicknamed Haolong Bay on land, these scenic parts of the region are best explored by boat. As you weave through the serene rivers, surrounded by massive limestone summits and passing through various caves and temples. Trin Temple is the place to worship the two generals during the Ding Dynasty, who sacrificed their lives in this area in honor of their king. about to head into our first cave. No, well, he said get down. <laughs> that is impressive. Just got done with the boat tour and if I had to describe that experience, I think the word would be um, tranquil. It was almost like meditative. It was just so peaceful, just rowing through these calm waters, surrounded by tons of greenery, mountains all around you. And the three hours was also broken up into like stops, like there were maybe three or four different temples that we got to check out, which was also very nice. But the most fun part was definitely going through the caves. And those caves are tight. Like you have no idea how close those ceilings are. The lady just kept yelling like, get down, get down. Get down, get down, get down. And you really have to get down because you will end up concussed if you don't. But I will say this though, after three hours of sitting on that boat and having to lean back like it's the Matrix, the lower back will feel it. Just insane to me though, that that whole tour was three hours long and only cost $10. Like, 
That's insane. They should definitely be charging more for that experience because that job can't be easy. The way she maneuvered that boat was masterful. Three hours of rowing and me filming, have a camera in her face, like I just felt terrible. So I, I gave her a good tip. I hope, hope it was good enough. Yeah. Really great experience. So glad I got to do that. Probably the best thing I've done in Vietnam so far, but this is still early on in the trip. There's lots more to do, including going to the Hang Mua viewpoint. Hang Mua was just a 15 minute ride away. Stopping to see some water buffaloes on the way. Now, the last activity for today is doing the Hang Mua viewpoint, which I think is 500 steps to the top. Maybe 5% of the way <laughs> and I'm already full. <laughs> Mual Cave or Cave of Dance is also known as the miniature version of the Great Wall with two massive peaks, the altar of Quang Am, the goddess of mercy, and at the opposite end, the dragon culturally essential to rain in agriculture as it watches over the area of Tampcock. I'm ready, all sweaty. <laughs> I made it to the fashion show. I take it fan. <laughs> oh <my laughs> Behind the scenes. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Over there, you get a very nice view. Yeah. Okay. This is the way to the top. Oh. <laughs> you know. Way to the top. <laughs> <laughs> this is pretty high up. just got back and my original plan was to check out in the morning to head to Phong Nha, but there are no morning buses to Phong Nha. So what we have to do is take a sleeper bus to Phong Nha, which is about a nine hour trip. Now I've never taken a sleeper bus before, but I'm hoping that it's really comfortable because after all the energy and sweat we burned today, I'm definitely gonna need some rest. So we have about an hour and 15 minutes to get showered packed and eat dinner because the uh, the bus is coming at 7 15 p.m. so we'll be arriving in Phong Nha about 4 a.m. where someone from the homestay will be picking us up at the station all right off to Phong Nha oh, this is <laughs> Phong Nha has been renowned as one of the most beautiful and interesting places in Vietnam so we'll have to wait till the morning to explore it Good morning and welcome to Phong Nha. I mean, just look at this place. Got here at four in the morning and actually that turned out to be better because now we have a full day of exploring this place. My first experience on the sleeper bus wasn't too bad actually. Aside from the honking, I did manage to get some rest. Phong Nha is known as the cave capital. The most famous one in particular is the Song Dong Cave, which I will not be seeing because it costs thousands of dollars to enter. You also have to register like a year in advance, but I will be seeing two other caves and that is the Paradise Cave and the Dark Cave, probably one of the activities I've been looking forward to most on this trip. Since this was a free day, we didn't have anything planned aside from riding around the town, taking it easy and just enjoying the moment. <laughs> this is sweet. We are in paradise. <laughs> Transporting boater bikes. That's Vietnam for you.
<laughs> I guess that's a no for a picture. <laughs> In the morning, I met with a tour group to begin the day's activities, starting with Paradise Cave. Regarding the cave, it's really, really big. 80 meters high and 150 meters. Yeah, it's so, it's so big when we get inside the cave. This cave was only discovered in 2005 by the same guy who found the Songdong Cave. Holy shit! That's a good reaction. <laughs> Do you know why we named this cave is Paradise Cave? Why? The member of the group, group uh, discovered this cave when he got in the cave. He been a lot of cave in the world, right? Because he is scientific about the cave. But when he got in the cave, he just was surprised. He just said, wow, paradise. <laughs> so that's why we named this cave, it's paradise cave. <laughs> Forget the difference between stalactites and stalagmites, but the way Kuyan explained it to me that the M, stalagmites, goes up and then the T, stalactites, goes down. And what he said was that it takes 100 years for one centimeter of stalactites or stalagmites to build. So basically all of this has happened within the course of, they say, 400 million years. This is insane. The rock here, the eagle here, you can see the hole over there. That's his eye, and his beak, and then it goes, that's his leg, and his wing goes back here. That looks like a woolly mammoth. Oh my God, look at that. So here we have the pool here. So in the summer, it will dry. I'm here, I'm here. I'm dragging behind because I can't stop filming. Everything just looks so yeah. cool. And we are so lucky because Noli is so busy. And you can turn around, take a look. Oh, that is the best view for photo in this cave. You can see here because it's Someone already broken. Someone already broke it. Yeah. Oh, that's sad. So we're not allowed to touch these structures because although they are massive, they are very fragile. Some of it has been damaged from the years of tourists touching it. Um, but it makes sense not to touch it because it is just water, salt, and sand. So don't touch it. Ooh, you better watch your head. Oh my God, it just gets better and better. You gotta be kidding me. Look at this. I'm absolutely blown away by this. And to think, we only get to see one kilometer of this. This goes on for another 30 kilometers, is it? 31 kilometers of this. <laughs> Wow. This is the end of the tour. That's the end of the uh, one kilometer. And if you want to go further down, you could. They do offer some adventure tours to go further down. Coming! I'm always behind. We're now headed to the dark cave, but first we stop for lunch, which was included with the tour. <laughs> that was rough. That was rough on the boys. Oh, it's cold. It's cold? Oh, yeah. You just gotta go in. Let's go. Oh, once you're in, it's quite refreshing, actually. Now we head into the cave. The main feature of the dark cave is that we'll get to enjoy a secluded spa like mud bath once we've reached this end. We literally would not be able to see anything without these lights. Like, see that? Whoa, I'm sinking. <laughs> 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 oh, <shit. laughs> you okay? It's like really thick here. 
<laughs> you know what? I'm just gonna go in. After the mud bath, we got ourselves cleaned up as we're now going to kayak further up to enjoy some activities at a small water park. In the morning, I was dropped off at the bus station by Ha who ran the homestay. Bye bye. <laughs> I was catching the 7 a.m. sleeper bus to Hoi An, and that was a long seven hour journey. Once I got to the station, I then had to grab a motor taxi to take me to the old town of Hoi An, where I'll be staying. Thank you. One of the most frustrating things about traveling is knowing your limitations because in between Phong Na and Hoi An is Hue. And originally my plan was to stop off in Hue because Hue is the imperial capital. It's also where the DMZ is at. There's a lot of history and culture there. And actually Marcus, who's a day ahead of me, was just in Hue. And when I saw his Instagram postings at the imperial city, it definitely made me jealous, you know. But it's just one of those things where like, I've been wanting to come to Vietnam for so long that I'm just trying to squeeze in too much in too little a time and you know, you had to make the decision that something had to be cut out and unfortunately it was Hue. But I'm now in Hoi An and the reason I chose Hoi An is because this is the place that everyone raves about as their favorite city. So we're gonna go check that out and see why that is so today. To Hoi An. How beautiful is this? Kind of reminds me of a Vietnamese version of Venice. Hoi An's ancient town was a major trading port in the 19th century and is now the city center for tourism. It became a UNESCO World Heritage Site in 1999 as its historical preservation reflects eras of French colonial architecture, Chinese shop houses, and the iconic Japanese covered bridge. So not only is this Japanese bridge really cool, but it's also represented on the back of the $20,000. So a major attraction to this area are all these Chinese-inspired silk lanterns that hang from the shops and on the streets. And it's recommended to come at night because that's when the town lights up and shows its true beauty. And so that's what we're going to do later on this evening. As the evening came, I returned to the Asian town where I caught up with Marcus. <laughs> Marcus is back. Everybody <laughs> Silk lanterns were first introduced to Hoi An in the 16th century by Chinese settlers as displaying them was a way of remembering their homeland. Silk had become a commodity during merchant trading and over time its popularity as decoration eventually became a communal way of bringing peace and fortune to the town. So you can see. Hey, hi. Thank you, Mai. We'll see you later. <laughs> yeah. We weren't planning to do the boat tour. It seemed a bit touristy but Mai and her dad seemed really nice, so she arranged for him to take us across for dinner, and then afterwards he would take us through the Tuban River.
say you're going to do it, aren't you? Uh, that one. Take it back. Oh. <laughs> I've enjoyed my time in the countryside of Phong Nai and Nimbin, but as far as cities are concerned, this is the prettiest. It just has such a beautiful vibe and charm to it. It's definitely won me over. That is the end of day one of Hoi An. What a beautiful night. It's only my first day in Hoi An, and it's quickly become one of my favorite places. I have a few more days here, and I'm officially into my second week in Vietnam. It's hard to believe I'm halfway through my trip. I've already had so many memorable moments, and I still have two more weeks to go. So as I head further south into Dalat, Saigon, and Phu Quoc, I'll be looking forward to what other adventures await me there. You walk in and you're immediately greeted by this giant statue of Buddha. Day number one in Dalat. Whoa! Oh, these turns are sick! If I had to choose a word to define Walking Street, it would be deafening. Welcome to Fuqua. <laughs> Viet Cong gorillas, they walk everywhere. You're gonna have to crawl now. If you're claustrophobic, that is not the tour for you.